Well, good morning, everyone. Good Sunday morning. We're about to begin our Sunday morning coffee house. And my name is Megan Moore. And on behalf of the Center for Functional Nutrition, I would like to welcome you all. It's always a delight to be here with you on Sunday morning. And we're very much looking forward to our presentation today. And I'm going to hand the coffee house over to Brian Mariani, and he will introduce our presenters. Brian. Thank you, Megan, and thank you everyone for joining us live on our Sunday morning coffee house where we get to connect, create, and collaborate together to be a force for good in the world and to impact lives beyond just our live virtual gathering here. Welcome to everyone who will be viewing this later on on YouTube and for the ripple effect that happens as a result of what we create here together this morning. So welcome everybody. I'm super excited today. Um, we've had an unbelievable year plus of the coffee house and we have connected with incredible people um, from all kinds of different modalities and offerings and thoughts and leaders. And today we get to hear from uh, two gentlemen that have created a platform in the health and wellness space and I know that they have a big mission and a big vision. And it's really exciting today to really give them an opportunity to speak to this community um, because they have a passion for the community and they've created something to really elevate this community that we're all so passionate about. So today we have Alex and Eddie. Alex Haley is the co-founder and Eddie Arpin is the CEO of Offering Tree. And I'm so delighted to have them on the coffee house with us today. And I, as people who have come to this before, I love to give people the opportunity to just be human and say a bit about who they are before we dive into all the value that will be brought. So why don't we start out, Eddie and Alex, with just a bit about who you are and how you got to be in our coffee house today. And you guys can sort out how you want to do that. <laughs> Sure, thanks. I guess I'll I'll start out and thank you for welcoming us to your coffee house sessions. It's a it's a great way. I think we're all finding new ways to connect with each other um, after the pandemic. So thanks for thanks for having us on and inviting us into your community. Um, so yeah, so my name is Eddie Arpin. Uh, Alex Haley is with me as well. He's a co-founder of Offering Tree. Um, we started Offering Tree a few years ago to really just create something to help um practitioners in the health and wellness industry create a, a sustainable career from what they're passionate about and you know it's become more relevant than ever now um you know after the pandemic and during the pandemic um really allowing uh practitioners to have multiple ways to connect with their audience and continue to provide services in like a multitude of all the different ways now that we have to do that post pandemic either live or in person or virtually over Zoom, or online with digital content over video. So um, I think everyone's sort of reimagining how they can connect and still um, um, provide their service. Uh, and everyone's being super creative, and it's it's been really cool to see how everyone's using the platform because um, you know we 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 feel really humbled by um, everyone who uses Offering Tree, and and it's always fun to see how they do it. But a little bit about me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm from uh, the Midwest. I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I went to college at the University of Minnesota. Uh, and that's where I, Alex and I met. Um, he actually started a meditation group, a, a student led meditation group with my roommate. And so we met and we kind of stayed in touch and connected. We took a long bike road trip in Japan to go visit my roommate who moved there to teach English after college. Um, we had a great time on that. And then we always just stayed in touch. Um, he started working at a local yoga studio in Minneapolis and they were, they were kind of uh, encountering some problems with how to best um, connect with their students while using technology and sort of not letting the technology get in the way of that student uh, instructor connection. So we started then having discussions about how we can solve this problem and um, a lot of like afternoon after work meeting sessions later, we kind of uh, created the framework and the blueprint for offering tree. And it's been a, a, a journey ever since. So 
Um, Alex, I'll, I'll kind of let you kind of tell your side of the story. Um, thanks, Eddie. Again, delighted to be here um, with everyone. And um, yeah, just thanks for uh, for having us on today. Um, a, a couple of things I can share, I think, by, by background. So I know there's a family connection here. Um, there's a family connection for me as well. My mom was a meditation teacher, uh, so it was sort of in the family. Uh, my initial story was I wanted to have nothing to do with it. Um, in fact, I was very stubborn and, uh, you know, so I think my, my mom was wise to not push it too hard. She kind of planted some seeds and then I came to it uh, actually um, in high school. I had a high school math teacher who uh, started every calculus class with just a couple of minutes of meditation. And that was the entryway um, for me uh, and actually changed the course of, uh, course of my life. And so I continued to study and practice. Uh, and I was pretty much in kind of a dual path. So I um, studied um, economics, law, business, a very kind of, you know, different way of engaging with the world. But I was spending all of my free time uh, studying Qigong, yoga, meditation, somatic-based uh, therapies. And um, it always struck me. I would hang out with, um, the, you know, these different communities that I was in. And if I was in um, the sort of business, economics, law, that uh, community, they would look at my contemplative community and they would say in a very kind of uh, sarcastic way, you know, they need to get a job. And I would hang out with the contemplative communities and they would look at everybody on the, you know, the business, legal, economic side, and they'd say they need to get a life. And so I sort of said, well, you two have so much to teach each other. And I think that there's a kind of a medium between the two. Uh, so I found myself being a translator. I basically translated and interpreted between worlds. And um, there was a lot to be benefited in that dialogue. And so that ultimately led me to um, actually changing careers to uh, studying science um, as a kind of medium of uh, translation. So I could talk to both communities and they could both seem to listen to each other if I had some language that they could agree on. And that seemed to be science. Now, I don't exclusively rely just on um, science because I don't think everything needs to be justified by science. So that's an important caveat that I have that ways of knowing don't need to be justified by other ways of knowing. So just to kind of put that out there. Um, but it did, it was useful to me in being able to communicate across communities and across uh, areas. So uh, what you can kind of, I think, see the connection with Offering Tree. So I had been trained in all of these modalities and meditation and somatic therapies and um, you know, a whole host of movement, different systems. But in all the trainings I went through, I had never really been taught uh, the business and tech skills that I needed to be successful. And it was just sort of presumed that I would learn those on my own and I would figure it out. And I kept going through training after training and learning that, in fact, it wasn't ever covered. But I knew enough based on my prior uh, lived experience that, oh, I, this is going to be useful. This is what I should do. And so as soon as uh, I ran into that issue at the, the yoga studio, it was community-based. It was donation-based. It had a very strong community vibe. And they were trying to implement this huge piece of software that was, uh, it was MindBody Online. It was massive. And it totally killed the community vibe. And so they pulled the plug and they turned to me and they said, well, you know, business and tech, what do you think? And that's when I uh, contacted Eddie and that was sort of the origins of it. And we quickly realized that this is a much more uh, common and large problem, which is why we ended up creating uh, Offering Tree. Uh, so that's a little bit about my, uh, my background, yeah. Well, thank you both for giving us the, the human side of who Alex and Eddie are and what Offering Tree is. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I met Eddie and Alex, it was, um, it, it was, it was one of those moments where I knew that this path that we're all on is not an individual one and that the people who are awakened and who are, um, enlivened and passionate about helping people and, creating their own way of doing that through modalities or thought or leadership um, that there are a lot of us out there and the more that we can find ways to connect those dots the more empowered this community can be and the more opportunity that more and more people will have to connect in and to learn things like meditation and yoga and these incredible opportunities to start having a relationship with ourself. I think that's the most important 
piece of this type of work is it creates this opportunity to have a relationship with ourselves, which then allows us to be better in the world and more a, a better listener and uh, uh, all those good things. So I'm just incredibly honored uh, and humbled with the work and the platform that Alex and Eddie have created. And I know that they've done it um, in a way in service. Uh, just knowing them as long as I have, um, they didn't set out to build this business to make themselves a billion dollars. I know that that's not their purpose. They set out to create an accessible platform that moves people who want to be moved to a position where they can actually create impact in their communities. So um, just for everyone here, I want you to know that the Center for Functional Nutrition is absolutely on board with what Eddie and Alex have created. And um, we're just really grateful to be collaborating together. So without further ado, um, I know Eddie and Alex are gonna dive in and give you all the details of what is Offering Tree and how can it benefit uh, you if you are someone who has a business in this space. So back over to you guys. Uh, thank you, Brian. I'll, what I'll do is I'll share a little bit of context and information that we know, things that we've learned along the way um, within the space. I hope it's useful. And then that context will um, allow Eddie to show how the platform is trying to meet those specific things that we've identified. Um, so just a little bit about the vision um, for Offering Tree. We are set up as a public benefit corporation. So this is at the heart of what we are. So it's part of the DNA of the company. And we set it up that way deliberately. Um, and our vision really is to create uh, just a one-stop online platform that builds what I would call a middle class for health for the health and wellness field. And um, I think this is really important because when we talk about having wellness education and access, greater accessibility for everyone, it's gonna require a really robust middle class of health and wellness practitioners. And what I see now, which has sort of been the trend, um, is what I would call the sort of celebrity model. I think we're all familiar with this, right? It's somebody who it's um, very kind of polished um, in, a, in a studio somewhere, maybe in New York or somewhere else. And there's a whole production team that's on site to produce this very high gloss sort of um, what I would call edutainment, the combination of education and entertainment together. And then there's a sort of mass audience, right? And you can look at this through the models of Peloton or um, even some of what Nordic Track is now doing. All of this is meant to be, there's sort of a 1%, one per, a 1%, which is that elite celebrity, uh, you know, whoever it is that's doing the video. And then there's a mass audience. And um, that that is still um, you know, pretty predominant out there. And the shift that we're starting to see, which is ha it was happening before the pandemic and it's still um, happening, but it's been accelerated by the pandemic. So it's a shift from celebrity to community. And so that's a huge shift. Um, and we know from um, you know, some of the data that's coming out that, uh, for example, telehealth, uh, this space, the, the use of telehealth has gone up from 11% to 46% within the span of a year. That's huge. And it's not going to go back because people have gotten used to um, the convenience of doing it, of you know, seeing a provider online, being able to interact, uh, you know, and just it's so much... Uh, uh, easier. So if I don't have to drive to the clinic and spend all that time and money and energy, you know, I'll still do that on occasion, but it's going to be much more of a, I'm willing to do telehealth. So that's one of the other big trends. Another one is hybrid models. So this idea that, yeah, I'll come in occasionally. I might come into a center or a clinic or a studio, but I also want to be able to do things at home, whether that's through videos, an app, some kind of virtual experience. And again, we see these behaviors have have shifted, and they're and they're not going to go back based on the trends that we're seeing. They may, you know, modulate a little bit, but they're here to stay. The other big shift we've seen is from what I would call elite experiences, and what I mean by elite is expensive destination, sort of like you know, fly to some place in the world, pay a lot of money, you're there for a week, and then you fly home. That um, has been shifted to what I would call more everyday experiences. So from elite to everyday. So accessible, affordable in the community. That's connection 
Um, the other thing that we're seeing is the shift from what I would call narrow well-being, which is defined as maybe just within my immediate um, self, mind, body, spirit, to a broader definition of well-being. So this includes financial, environmental, purpose, a we, again, going to the community, right? So it's not just my own individual um, kind of understanding or, um, you know, um, purposeful behavior, but it's actually how is it in relationship to the community and what impact is it having or how am I not helping the community and I should be including that as part of my practice. Uh, so these are some of the, the larger trends that are kind of at work. And what this means from a sort of, uh, if we're talking about building a middle class uh, for health and wellness practitioners, is that the old model required bigger is better and it was ad driven, which means that um, unless you were able to, you know, have this huge audience and then be able to get sponsorships and brand recognition and all these things, you likely were going to have a really tough time getting an audience. The new model actually is one that is where you niche, you actually pick a niche that meets the specific needs and pain points of your clients and students. So you get to know them really well. And within that niche set of offerings that you're providing, you're establishing long-term kind of loyal client provider relationships, which means that you're tapping into things like purpose and meaning. And um, this is the space, there's a term for this space. This is what is known as the passion economy. And it's a subset of the creator economy. So the passion economy is basically where you make your livelihood doing what you love in a scalable way. And what's so interesting about this is that um, I'd say this is probably one of the biggest changes that um, I've seen even in my own thinking and also in talking with other health and wellness professionals is to understand first and foremost, uh, kind of where you are in your career. So we see basically three segments and this is even within offering tree, those that are using our platform. There are what I would call new solo wellpreneurs. There are what I would call experienced solo wellpreneurs. And then there are this other category, which are the wellness business owners with sort of multiple providers. And each of these segments, so these three segments, has specific needs and different paths for success. Uh, however, there's a kind of a core overarching, um, uh, what I would call a metric or just a way of thinking that can be uh, kind of bridge those different segments that can be really helpful to understand. And this is the kind of key insight. And the key insight is that if you have a core set of students or clients um, that support you on a monthly basis, then you can build a sustainable livelihood. And to get very specific about this, to not keep it abstract, if I talk about the first two segments, the solo wellpreneur or the sort of experienced solo wellpreneur, we're talking about um, ballpark numbers of about 100 students or clients who are willing to support you at about $85 a month that will generate you an income over $100,000. And if that's, you know, in the ballpark of a sustainable livelihood. Now, of course, it's going to vary based on where you live, cost of living and all these other factors. Um, but if you put it into the actual numbers, it's like, oh, that changes. I don't need to get a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. It's like a hundred really loyal clients and students that value what I'm doing. I'm nurturing long term relationships and I'm working towards a goal of some somewhere around eighty five dollars a month. And of course, you can change these numbers, right, if you need to. So you could say I'm going to increase the number of students and lower the amount of monthly um, support that I need. Or maybe you'll increase the amount if you're doing a really high touch, high value um, service and you decrease the number of clients. But it's sort of a ballpark number. So I just wanted to share that as sort of, um, you know, a context. And the last piece I'll share, and then I'm going to turn over to Eddie so you can actually see what we do, um, is for new solo wellpreneurs, uh, I'd say the key is about learning and building a base and finding out who will eventually be your most dedicated and loyal client. So this is like you try things out, you partner with others, you say yes to opportunities, you're going where others aren't even looking or going, right? There are certain things that others just aren't doing, they're not looking at, they're not even thinking about, that's where you're going to go. And you're going to focus on your ongoing education so that you can learn and try things out, figure out what strategies work. If you're more of an experienced solo wellpreneur, it's really about um, segmenting your existing clients and students to deeply understand their needs and pain points, and then provide services at different levels of engagement and cost, which then will allow you to have these different levels of um, support 
based on uh, the tiered offerings and sort of a deep understanding of the needs and pain points. And if you're a wellness business uh, owner with kind of multiple providers, it's really about using a unified system. So if you can understand in real time who's interacting with your business and then creating community, accountability, even maybe exclusive content for memberships or package holders, and even opportunities for acknowledgement, recognition, and celebration. All of that's going to tap into this deeper level of purpose and meaning. Um, so I'm going to stop there. That's the larger vision context. And then I'll turn it to Eddie about how we kind of try to realize that within the platform. Yeah, that's those are great points, Alex. And I think one thing maybe to just to to note on those is, you know, don't get too hung up on the 100 or whatever. I think it totally depends on the business that you're doing. If you do a lot of like private consultations, one-on-one -on -one appointments, you know, that number might be 15 or 20, um, you know, so, um, but it's really about, you know, how can you turn a smaller audience into a sustainable uh, career and not have to have this like huge following and reach this celebrity status. Um, so, so yeah, I can, unless anybody has any questions, I don't know how you guys typically do Q and A, um, if it's all the way through or just at the end, but um, I can certainly go over the demo uh, of, of the actual, what the software looks like. Does that sound good, Brian? Okay, great. Um, I will share my screen then. Um, all right, so I, I, create, I created this site actually for Brian just to kind of show him, um, you know, throwing back at him a, a, a Center for Functional Nutrition site, um, but it, it works well for this demo. So um, let me just move these heads here. Um, so I would say, you know, there's, there's a few pillars of what Offering Tree provides. Uh, and one of them is a website builder. Now, if you have your own website that, you've, that you really like, you can embed all of our functionality on another site. So don't feel like if you already have a site that, you know, Offering Tree um, doesn't work for you because um, it still can. Um, but one of the powerful things is that it can be your website if you don't have one already. Um, and so I can show you, I'll show you that now. Another important thing is just some, we have some marketing tools uh, to just really continue to engage with existing clients and customers, but also reach new ones. Um, and we do that with email marketing tools and content marketing tools. And then our website also has like built-in search engine optimization, which you don't need to know, but what exactly all that does, but basically it helps you get found on Google or Bing or wherever people are searching online for your services. Um, so we try to provide some good marketing tools so that you can increase your business. Um, and then the third thing is scheduling and registration. So if you do a lot of like booking one-on-one -on -one appointments for like consultation calls or, um, you know, cooking classes or anything like that. Um, we provide scheduling and registration tools and you can also do events. So like for, for instance, like a, cot, like a webinar or um, say you do group cooking classes or something like that, you can, you can host uh, events um, and have scheduling and registration. Um, and so, so those are just a few of the tools, but I'll, I'll stop blabbering here and actually show you things. So this is, uh, we have like one basic template right now um, and so this is an example of a website. So you can have, you can have upcoming events here where people can click in and register. Um, you have opportunity to talk about yourself. Uh, there's a contact form here where people can get in touch with you via email if they have questions. Um, and then you can also create uh, custom pages. So, you know, we provide a lot of these pages for you. Um, but if you always, if you want additional pages, you can go on and create additional pages as well. So we try to make it flexible and we're always improving as well. So, um, you know, if, if you ever say, hey, this is, this is great, but you could really use this or that, we try to be a, a listening um, provider. So, and, and, and really be responsive to our users. So, um, uh, but yeah, and I can show you, um, so these are, um, you can also list all your offerings here so uh, if anybody wants to like book an appointment, if any of your clients want to book an appointment, we have easy registration and booking tools so they can come in and pick a appointment one-on-one. -on -one. Um, or if you do have events, um, you can advertise those events and quickly register for those. And you can, you can accept, we, we do, um, 
you, you do have the opportunity to accept a lot of different forms of payment, um, credit card, um, you can sell, and you can also sell packages and memberships. So if you have a loyal customer base, um, you can sell like a 10 pack, um, or you can sell a monthly membership or an annual membership. So we try to we try to make it easy and flexible for for your clients to engage with your services. Um, you can also have a blog, which is great. I don't have any blog posts up for this, but that the blog posts can be great for content marketing. So if you're writing in depth about the services you provide, um, that that not only provides really good information to your clients and students, but it also helps you get found online if people search for things on Google, your blog post might come up and that might be the way that they first get introduced to you and your services. Um, we also have um, in what we call an online store. So if you are interested in creating like videos, like could be cooking videos, yoga videos, um, you can sell those individually as well. Um, and those are a great way, especially now to engage with uh, people wherever they are. So you don't even have to be in person and can be whenever they are because everyone's kind of schedule is pretty mixed up these days and um, they can sort of engage with your services when it's convenient for them, where it's convenient for them. Um, so that's just a little bit about uh, the software um, from a public facing side. And I can, I can briefly kind of show what this looks like when you own, um, when you own an account and you want to come in and, and uh, edit some of these things. So this is our back end. Um, and so we have a, a dashboard that just gives you sort of an overview of um, you know, how many site visitors you have, how many clients you have, what's upcoming. Um, and then we have a few different sections in here, uh, an edit website section. These are all the tools to help you edit your website. So you can edit the home page, you can create blog posts, you can create additional pages. Um, if you, we provide you a free uh, site domain basically a url and address for your website but you can add your own custom domain if you already have a domain you can set that up um, and then there's the manage schedule section here this is where you can add all of your services um, and you can set up your appointments you can set up your availability you can schedule your webinars or live sessions or classes um, you can manage all of your your rosters so if the uh, people who are signing up for your classes, booking your appointments, you can um, cancel their registrations, rebook them, refund them, see who's coming, email them. Um, so a lot of good class and appointment management tools and client management tools. Um, we also have these communication marketing tools. So email marketing, um, this is where you can send newsletters to all of your uh, clients. Um, and we, so we prove every time someone registers for your, for your appointments or registers for your classes, they all, be, they all come into the system and we provide easy tools to be able to email all of those people or email segments of those people based on what services they sign up for. Um, you can also set up automated email sequences. So if someone subscribes to your newsletter, you can send them a sequence of emails to try to bring them a little bit closer to you and get them to book your services. Um, so that's, that's been a really popular strategy um, where you may give away something for free if someone subscribes to your newsletter. Um, like maybe it's a, a video about some of your services like a cooking class or something like that. And then if they sign up, they get that for free. And then they, then they receive a series of emails um, that promotes your services more and hopefully they book a one-on-one -on -one appointment for a higher price point with you. Um, um, and then under payments, we have, you know, where you can look at all the payments to your platform, manage them, do any refunds you need to, set up packages and memberships. Um, our online store feature is pretty popular. Um, this is where you can upload videos or create courses so you could have like a single video of uh, like a yoga class or a, or a cooking class and you could sell that for a, a fixed price or you could have it be available to all of your members um, uh, or anybody who owns a package. Um, you could also create courses so you could bundle videos or um, 
you know, it can be video, text, PDF, a whole host of different digital content that you can bundle together and sell as one uh, higher priced item. Um, we also provide ways to offer discounts and promotions. Um, so you can set up a discount code for a new user, um, a new client, so they could only use it once. Um, or you could set up discount codes for, you know, an un that people could use an unlimited amount of time. Um, so these are great ways to sort of create incentives for people to, um, who are new or even your loyal clients to um, re-engage with you. Um, and so that's a really high overview. I know I glossed over that and went really fast. Um, so it, if anybody has any questions, I would definitely be happy to dig in further, but um, maybe I'll leave it there so I don't. And, totally and Eddie, do you want to just say a word about maybe what, what's coming next? So people have a sense of sort of like what we're working on. Yeah, sure. So yeah, like I said earlier, we're always listening to our audience and, and our users and trying to build a better product for them. And so um, I think one of the things that we're making a focus on is, is, is really allowing more customization away, um, around the way the website looks. So I, like I said, we have sort of one, one template right now, but um, we're going to be building some new exciting uh, page builder tools that will allow people to really get the look and the feel that they're, that they're uh, looking for. Um, and we're also building more, we're going to be building more tools around um, being able to send more automated emails. So like I said, you can, you can set up a automated e email sequence of when people sign up for your newsletter, but we're looking to do the same thing for when people do other, interact with you in other ways. So say they um, sign up for one of your classes, um, you, you could send them a, maybe a reminder sequence to make sure they come up, but then after the event, they could, you could send them a thank you email and um, say like two weeks later, another email to re-engage with you. Um, so uh, yeah, we're, that, that's sort of more around like making sure that offering tree is, is, a, is, is working really hard as an assistant for you so that you, that, um, you don't have to be doing all these manual things. Awesome. Um, Eddie, if you want to stop sharing the screen so we can kind of see everyone again. Um, <clears throat> I love it. I was, uh, you know, kind of blown away months and months ago when Eddie and I first met and uh, they really stay true to their word. I mean, they've developed tremendously even over the last few months. So there's there's huge growth and they're totally dedicated to their users and um, just thank you both, really, um, just such an honor to be collaborating. So if anyone has a comment or a question for the sake of not speaking over each other, I'll call on you. I see Catherine Taylor. Yes, well, thank you for that. I, you've talked about this, Brian, so it's been nice to see this. I have a question, like if I already have a newly developed website and I have like the Aweber and I have some of these pieces put together, how does your system interface with what I've already got? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, a lot of those tools that I showed you, you can embed into another website. Um, so say, um, say you are interested in putting uh, your schedule on your Aweber website um, and, and listing all the services and, and making it easy for people to register and pay online. Well, you can, you can just take the scheduling component and embed it on your website. Or say you're interested in um, the, the online store functionality we have because you want to create some cooking classes. Um, and, and so then you can take that and embed that on your website. Or say you're interested in um, selling a membership because you want to allow your members to um, you know, engage with your courses and you know, book like a one one one-on-one -on -one session per month or something. So you could create a membership and embed our membership page on your site so people could um, create a membership with you. So there's a, there's, there's a few different ways that you can kind of plug Offering Tree into your existing ecosystem. Um, and it's kind of, we try to make it flexible so you could do you know, as many pieces as you want, if that makes sense. It, it does, thank you, thank you. All of this, this is also, badly needed for those and i love your concept of the middle class because i've been around as long as russell has and 
from day one, I knew I did not want to big, be a big time player. I just didn't want that lifestyle. I didn't want to be flying around and having to adjust to that. And um, so it's nice to have somebody cater to more uh, a, a way that I can get my stuff out there, but not in such an overwhelming way that I have to recommit and sell my child in the next lifetime to get successful. You know, it's like, it's manageable. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great, great comment, Catherine, and an awesome question. And I just have to say, like, before I forget it, um, Alex said something totally extraordinary in his talk. He said something like, you know, we're looking to help people who have a passion for something and want to scale it. It was something like that. And I just thought that was so brilliant. Um, to Russell, were you waving? Yes, yes, thank you, Brian. <clears throat> and thank you, Catherine. Yes, representing the, uh, the pioneers of a certain generation here. Um, I was uh, moved very much by both Eddie and Alex's presentation, particularly Alex in your explanation of how you came to the realization of the middle class <clears throat> concept and the shift away from the celebrity um, model to, to something much more user-friendly and, and much more important. Because that's the shift that the entire global culture is going through. We are literally shifting from independence as if that was the most important thing in life, that you must become independent. And very few people can win that game. And as Catherine said, and I agree with her a million percent, I resisted that model myself. I never wanted to, to uh, be that, and yet didn't know how to create this alternative. <clears throat> But fortunately, reality is on our side, and you kind of touched on this, Alex. Two, two quick statements, and then I'll, I'll close. Biology is to the 21st century what physics was to the 20th century. And then in 1979, Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And believe it or not, the first sentence of that book said, interdependence is a higher value than independence. And that's what we're all up to here. Connecting with as many people as possible, inviting people who have a passion, who have a niche to serve a smaller community. And, but those smaller communities are connected to the larger community. So thank you guys for what you're doing. Really, really inspiring. Yeah, I mean, there it is, you know, and it's crazy. 1979, there was that whole wave and then we kind of had a dip. And now through everything that's going on and certainly the pandemic was a big eye opener, um, but why not now? And it's happening. So uh, I see you, uh, Christine, yoga, Christine. Yes, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Hi, I'm Christine. Um, I'm a former executive who was super stressed out and completely living in my head for the first 40 years of my life. And um, I finally found yoga at age 40 and then it made a dramatic change in my life. And so for my 50th birthday, I did my yoga teacher training and then started teaching online and offering all my services online, focusing mostly women 45 plus who are also stressed out and kind of um, so I can help them. But I, I wanted to speak up because I do use Offering Tree as my platform and they have made it so easy for me to go online without having to learn all the technology. I mean, I literally had my first version of my website up within 30 minutes and it allowed my clients to register, to pay, to sign liability waivers. I mean, they just made it super easy for me. And, and just all the improvements uh, that they have rolled out over the last 12 months as they're listening to us and our input just has been tremendous. So I just wanted to put a plug in for them from somebody who's actually using it. Um, and I'm, I'm just loving the, the ease of use 
um, for using offering tree. And it, it's, it's just, it has made my life so easy because I don't need to focus on the technology part, the tech part. I can actually focus on teaching and building community. And that's what offering tree has allowed me to do. So thank you. I love that, Christine. And I've noticed that it says Boston on your thing and I'm not that far away. So we need to get together because I love yoga. <laughs> so thank you for that wonderful just acknowledgement of Offering Tree. Um, Jill, I see you. Great, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Brian. I think Megan had her hand up first. I don't know if you wanna to go to her or. No, you, you go. Did, but okay. We'll go <laughs> yeah. to her later. Okay. <laughs> and I think it kind of fits because um, like, and I don't know if it was Christine or Christine, I know I've seen you on our page. I too am a customer. Um, there's so many things that I'm excited about and this is not a paid endorsement. <laughs> Um, I just came on to learn, but I, I did want to share. Um, I'm one of those middle class people that I, I don't like tech. I have learned to love tech much more because of Offering Tree. Um, and as Christine said, my goal is to, especially with the Zoom classes being new, is to come on and have just 100% presence for my students. And I teach Yoga Nidra. So I am getting clients who are very anxious. They're not tech savvy. The pandemic has been hard. They don't want a lot of mess. And so it's really nice for me as a provider that my website is straightforward and it's easy for them to sign up. I used to have mind body and it was super expensive. And I was, at, I was at the very lower level and I will say they definitely had levels. So there were many things I could not access. When Zoom first came on, the level I was paying didn't allow for Zoom. Right away with Offering Tree. Offering Tree, when I create my classes, they create my Zoom link. I don't have to go create a Zoom link. Um, so I just, again, I wanna be brief, but their customer service, everything that you're hearing from them is 100% who they are. I might write a help email at 2 a.m. not expecting a response. Sometimes within two or three hours, I might have a response from somebody who's awake. It's straightforward language. They follow up to make sure that it's helpful. They also have help articles. So if a student says, I don't understand how to use my membership or the discount uh, code, I don't have to recreate an email in my own language. I find the help article and I forward to them. And then lastly, they have a Facebook user group for us. So within that community, and I've seen Christine answer questions, I can post a question there or a comment, and we have a community of people who will help. And then usually um, someone from Offering Tree will hop on and help as well. So they, I'm not an anxious person by nature, um, but I, I just can't speak to, I no longer have a web manager. Like I could not even change my own pictures because I didn't know how. I don't need a sign up system. I don't need a separate web manager. I can do, I'm gonna say actually everything myself. And then I also have audio recordings on there. That's when I first reached out to them. Um, they didn't have that at first, but I'm gonna say within four months they had that up and running. And so again, people don't have to come to my class. They can access the recording. So big cheerleader for the value that they add. And they, I just can't say how much everything that you're hearing about them is really, really who they are. I love that, Jill. I mean, what a beautiful endorsement. Um, I just got so clearly offering tree empowers their users. And that's, that's rare. That's really rare out there. And um, yeah, I just absolutely love it. That was a ringing endorsement. I beautifully said, uh, Megan, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'll let Janet go first, Brian. Go she ahead, Janet. Thank, thank you, Megan. <clears throat> so guys, what I just heard was stupendous. I, I've got, uh, gosh, I can't say everything I would like to say because it's not appropriate on here, but I would like to connect with you guys. So in terms of what <clears throat> Catherine and Russell said, uh, I have a business. I try and help very small, what I call micro business owners, get a website up and running and costs and complications and tech. I do my best to help them, but it, I, it's a struggle. 
what you are offering for the price you are offering it. I, I, I need to be on board. I need to know you guys. I need to be able to offer this to people who, like Jill just said, they don't, they not only don't need, they don't want, they can't afford a web manager like me. They, they don't need to be paying me to change a picture. Um, now, obviously, I want to make a living, but I want to help people. And I have been struggling to find a balance between being actually able to help people and pay my own bills. And this is stupendous. So I, I will ask Brian to um, connect us uh, offline from this. And uh, I really would like to talk to you guys more. Thank you so much, Janet. You know, that really, <clears throat> that really hits the heart of why we created this coffee house. Um, because literally every week we get to bring new people together you know, I've never met Jill or Christine and Christine's in Boston. I mean, how exciting is that? It's, um, and for Janet to say that, Alex and, and Eddie, that's real. And uh, just this little moment that we created is gonna, is gonna make a difference and have an impact. Uh, so thank you, Janet. And I will connect you both, I promise. Um, anyone else with a question or I see Teresa. Oh, well. Oh. Uh, hi, thank you. I'd like to thank you, Brian and Eddie and uh, Alex, for your presentation. It was really uh, quite good. And um, I'm trying to work differently this year. I've, I've done some classes and stuff online, and I'm in the process of just about launching my website, you know, um, so I do have a website. Um, I'd like to work more via the internet instead of running you know, from studio to studio and center to center. Uh, I'm also wondering too, can you help somebody build their reach as far as, you know, uh, obtaining more clients? And then, um, you know, my niche is uh, people with uh, cancer, autoimmune uh, disorders, um, stress, anxiety, trauma, um, that type of thing. And I do quite a few different things from wellness coaching, you know, to teaching yoga meditation and also um, sound therapy. So, um, you know, I'm wearing many hats and I have a couple great workshop ideas. Do you think we'd be a good fit? Yeah, I can take, I can take that one. Um, yeah, you know, we just want to help in any way we can. So if we can help with the technology side, great. If if you are looking to be connected with people who can help you, um, uh, you know, broaden your reach, we work with amazing partners who that's all they do. And we would love to connect you. So um, I think Alex dropped in the um, the chat an uh, in, in email address where we, we check that email address all the time hello at offeringtree.com. Um, and we also have support at offeringtree.com if you're looking for more of a technical, I'll drop that in the chat too. If you're looking for more of a technical question, I would say reach out there. If you're interested in just saying hi and, and connecting um, like the way you're, you're talking, I would say send an email at hello at offeringtree and we'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, we, we would like to help in any way we can. So whether it's, whether we can help you directly or we, or we can connect you with someone who we, we believe really can help you, we will do that. So um, I'm interested in trying to work, you know, with you. So I, I'm, I'm sorry if I sent a different message. I'm just wondering like, you know, uh, my website, will I still be able to use it, you know, with yours? Does it interconnect or? You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I, uh, you can embed a lot of the pieces into an existing website. So whether it's like WordPress or Wix or Squarespace, um, if you if you want to use our membership tools or our scheduling tools, um, we can help you definitely do that. Um, and so yes, we yeah, we we can we can be just a little bit a little part of your website, or we all the way to being like your whole website and and kind of any part in between. So um, we can definitely help you with that, and then. And like, but also, you know, we, I think you're, you're, I, I think you asked about like getting help, uh, broadening your reach. And that is, that is one thing that we're learning that is, is almost just as, as much of a need as the technical side. So we're trying to marry, I think we're in a unique position where we can kind of marry those two. 
um, we, we can provide all the tools you need to, to build the shed and then the blueprint to like figure out how to do it. So we want to kind of bring those things together and we're, we want to work with our partners to provide um, educational uh, resources to help you succeed like all the way from the top down. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, any, any kind of need you have around this area, like we're happy to help. And then the other question, do you do this every week, this coffee thing? Yes, so we do this every Sunday. Um, we are taking a short little summer break, but every Sunday we do the coffee house. Because I, I have a young man who is a chef and oh, I've been cool. to him about doing just that when you were showing your demo and um, this might be a great way for him to move into that. You know? Yeah, Teresa, are you, how are you connected here? Are you through our network or through Offering Tree? Um, my friend, Noel Kalinchok, who I okay. think is working with you now, we have a mastermind group. And so she sent me this information and here I am. Well, it's, we're so honored to have you and please uh, just go to our website um, and send us an email. Uh, we'd love to connect further and, um, you know, obviously make the connection with Alex and Eddie. They're brilliant. I'll just say quickly. Uh, when I first got connected with them, I was like, hey, there's a little iteration here that I feel like would be really helpful. And they were just like, yep, yeah, we're just going to go there and get it done for you. So they're, um, they're absolutely incredible. Um, but great to meet you, Teresa. Thank you for being here. Awesome. You, um, and I'll also say that um, these wonderful gentlemen have put a link into the chat. So for those of you that are really looking to integrate their services, however that looks, uh, there is a link there um, and they've provided a very generous discount um, for all of you. So that link is in the chat um, and maybe put it in there again, Alex, just because it's kind of further up. Um, I did notice, oh, Deborah, I see you raised your hand there. Go ahead. Thank you all. Um, this is my first coffee house and I'm zooming to you from outside Boston in Newton, Mass. And um, I'm just so appreciative to all of you, to, to um, Russell, Brian, Hagen, to Offering Tree and to all of the faces and um, beings who are here. It's just so wonderful to be in community in this way. Um, I love that I was guided to tap into this coffee house because um, so many things are percolating for me. I have a feeling that um, I'm meant to connect with the center for my own health, but then um, Alex and Eddie, um, one of my favorite things to do is to be an ambassador and a connector, um, oftentimes through a lot of volunteering. And so I, I look forward to connecting with you. I feel like my question follows a bit from um, what Teresa was asking. I saw on the website that there were the specific categories around, I think, many of the clients you have now who offer things like yoga, Pilates, perhaps meditation, things of that nature. But I'm also curious it, where your other customer base might be, because I'm just thinking of nonprofits that I work with, of other types of practitioners, and how I might share with them about what you all do. So um, that was very long-winded, but I am sometimes known for that. So. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I can probably jump in briefly and just answer. Um, I, I think the um, what Offering Tree does, again, it's around that sort of empowerment. We like to say that we're trying to help people move from overwhelm to confidence in under 30 minutes. That's kind of our, that's the emotional promise we're trying to make. Um, and uh, I think that what we're doing it could be applicable for so many because you can think of us as sort of like, um, we are empowering service-based businesses um, that have a mission and a purpose. That's sort of, that's our space. Um, 
And we're really, uh, we do that, I think, in a couple of ways. So we do that by trying to make meaning. So we, we partner a lot. We have a lot of educational webinars. We're going to be releasing some um, new courses that are developing sort of educational topics on business and technology. Um, and it's, it comes out of, again, our lived experience of, you know, not having gotten that myself, even going through all the training, although I went through, uh, I got it in other areas. And so we're going to try to be offering that. We're also, I think our other area, um, our kind of focus is what I would call tech powered relationships. So it's this idea of how to make something scalable and sustainable. So that's that middle class vision, right? We don't wanna like rocket ship to the moon. We wanna make it scalable and sustainable so that you can have a livelihood um, being of service to others. And that's really kind of what our, our we're going for. So we call that sort of tech powered relationships. How can tech not be overwhelming and intimidating and be in service? And if I use uh, Eddie's shed analogy, I might make it a house. You can think of us as sort of like the wiring or the pipes in your house. You never want to see the wiring or the pipes, but you want to be very confident that when you flip a switch on, the lights are going to come on, that when you turn the faucet on, the water's going to run. That's what we are. We're, we're the unseen in the background. We want to, we put all of our users and clients uh, in the foreground and that's our brand is, it's you. Uh, basically, we're, we, we don't want to be seen. We want to be in the background, like the plumbing and the wiring. And I think the last thing that we do, which is what you're hearing, is that we are really dedicated to uh, creating a learning community, and which means that we partner to learn. Um, and we do that with our clients, with our users and clients, and we do that with collaborators and experts that are out in the field. I love it. Such a, such a perfect, clear answer there, Alex. Um, I just want to quickly highlight Thank Carissa. Um, I'll just say very briefly, Offering Tree is going to give you what Alex just stated very clearly for an extremely accessible price. And then that kind of gives you the foundation. And then it's just about creating social equity in your community, whether it's live or online um, and doing what you do best with one person who's going to tell someone else. Um, and before you know it, you'll have your beginnings of your community. So it's, it's really a synergy of what offering tree will give you a, a place to be online and then doing the work in person or virtually by making connections with people and just sharing what your gifts are. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, anyone else? Uh, Megan, I know you wanted to make a comment and then we'll close. Yeah, I think we're, we're coming to the end. I think I'll just want to say that I admire both Alex and Eddie for bringing their passion and practicality as such a gift. Uh, to potentially so many, many, many people. And so thank you for today. And I think I'll just uh, leave it at that for now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Megan. Um, so for those of you that are new to the coffee house, um, <laughs> we went a lot longer than we usually do. We're trying to be very respectful of people's time. Um, but this was a really engaged group. And we wanted to make sure that um, we stuck with you and got those answered, those questions answered live. Uh, but please do follow up. However you got here, um, you can connect with us, the Center for Functional Nutrition.net, Google Russell Mariani. You're going to get to us, and we're very accessible as well. And uh, Offering Tree, OfferingTree.com, it's in the chat. Connect directly with them. Um, they are totally accessible and, and ready to help. Um, so we always love to close our coffee house with what we call a good news. And um, we just want to take the energy that we've created together um, and more give you that smile and that energy to go out and just be kind for, for someone. Just do something that lightens someone else's day because we've all lit this candle together and um so we have our very own alex who is going to uh lead us in a short meditation i'm excited and uh and then we'll say goodbye go ahead alex uh thanks brian so i'll share something i use on a regular basis um and just in brief um i will use a trauma-informed approach so um all everything i provide is just a suggestion it's not a 
uh, requirement. It's an invitation. So check out if it works for yourself. Um, remember that you can always open your eyes, eyes closed, what's comfortable. And if at any point anything feels like it doesn't work for you, then just orient to the room and make sure you're looking at things, particularly in the distance, listening to sounds that are further away, gentle movements that are self-soothing. So just want to put that in the field. You know, it's really your, your own best teacher and stay close to that. So with that, what I'll uh, invite is whatever posture you're in, whatever is accessible for you, whether it's standing, lying down, or seated. Um, just uh, allow yourself to come into a posture with some amount of ease, whatever that means for you. So even if you have chronic pain or other challenges or difficulties, finding a place with relative ease, and it's your relative ease, what that means for you. And then deciding for yourself if you'd like your eyes open or your eyes closed. It's whatever feels safe and supportive to you. And allow yourself to bring your attention more inward. So connecting with your body in this moment. What's your body telling you? Connecting with your mood. Maybe it's a feeling, excitement. Maybe there's a bit of nervousness, contentment, whatever it might be. Checking in with your mood. And then just doing a weather check of sort of your mind. Is it very active? Is it still? And we're not judging or needing to fix. We're just noticing. And then I'll invite you to take one or two slightly slower and deeper in breaths and out breaths. So they don't need to be huge shifts, but just a little bit slower and longer in breath, out breath. Now checking in again, just with the felt sense of your body in this moment. So not the idea, not the concept, but the felt sense of your body. And inviting your body, again, an invitation to really rest down, to be supported, supported by the floor, the chair, you know, whether you're standing, seated, lying down. And I want you to consciously recognize that you have support. So the ground underneath you is stable, it's steady. It's offering you support. And see if you can consciously, with your attention, receive the support. If you're like me, I don't always receive the support. I have to remind myself, oh, I can receive this. I can actually trust that the ground is stable, that the chair is stable. And when I do that, you might notice, just like me, that your body kind of drops. It's almost like it's not hovering quite as much. It's as though the body can rest on the earth itself. It's a kind of grounding, a kind of settling. So again, just an invitation, allowing the physical body to rest on earth, to rest on the ground, to be held, to be supported. Nothing to do, it's more of a letting be, a letting go into that support. And then one more slightly longer and slower in breath and out breath. And with that out breath, again, that invitation to really be supported, to be held, to be grounded. And then in your heart and in your mind's eye, you might try just offering a phrase of well-wishing, of well-being. And you can use the phrase I'm about to use, or you can adapt it to whatever works for you. So the phrase is just an inner sincere thank you. Thank you to this body, to my body, 
despite whatever limitations or challenges or pain it may have. Thank you. It's done whatever I've asked of it to the best of its abilities. So thank you to my body. And now making a little more room in your mind's eye and in your heart and including everyone here today, everyone on this call, maybe even everyone in the house that you're in or the apartment that you're in or wherever you are, if you're visiting a friend in, in their house. So everyone on the call and everyone in your kind of immediate environment, making some space in your heart and your mind. Might be the felt sense of everyone here, might be the images, but just creating a connection And then again, offering that heartfelt, sincere well wish. Thank you. And then finally, opening our hearts wide and offering that. May our time together today here and our discussion and our sharing, may it be for the benefit of the wider world. May it be in service. What you do matters. Your presence matters. And then when you're ready, you can just let the meditation go, open your eyes, orient to the space where you are. So I do this often. It's a grounding exercise, and then it's a sort of opening exercise. Um, so if it's useful, um, please, you know, you can reuse it. You use any, everything I offer is freely offered. Um, please take what's useful and, and leave the rest. Um, and that's the, maybe the last thought I'll share, and then I'll stop, which is, it's it really what you do matters and this is why eddie and i are doing what we do we're here to empower all of you to provide um, greater reach because there's uh, so much need right now um, and you know if i look pre-pandemic the kind of rates of anxiety and depression versus during the pandemic i mean we're still in it right i mean we have the privilege in this country that for many of us not everyone for many of us we're getting to the other side but much of the world it's we're not out of this yet and if we look at the statistics you know anxiety is almost two times what it was pre-pandemic depression is three times what it was and that's just on the data that we have so what you do matters um, and i just i, I hope that uh, what we shared here today is useful it's helpful to you and um, thank you for what you do, because you are providing something that is so needed in the world right now. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, every single person that showed up today. Thank you for everyone that will watch this afterwards. Um, we all encourage you to share what's happened today. Those of you that were here live, share what happened today and have an open heart and mind for people, the planet, animals, all life. Hold the door for someone. Tell someone they have a beautiful smile. Tell someone they have a twinkle in their eye. You never know what that could do for someone. And uh, Alex, you just you said it so well, and um, I'm so very grateful to you and Eddie for creating a space for this incredible community to grow and thrive. Thank you everyone for joining, for connecting, creating and collaborating. Um, see you all very soon. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.